Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Cooper Villa channel. I'm Scott Cooper, and I'm here with Noah Fisher and Tommy Lazaridis to discuss Aston Villa versus Nottingham Forest from back on Saturday. Yes, it's been a big week for us villains. Uh, we needed this win. It was a great performance and another three points, and we will be talking about that and much more after this. Okay, so after um, a bit of a shaky January, a jittery January, we got into it with a fabulous February. Three wins out of four in the Premier League. Um, the only slip-up was that game against Man United, which we actually played all right. So we've turned it around, and we started off in this game very well. Tommy, haven't haven't seen you for a week or two, so I'll start with you. Um yeah. And we just got off to the best start, Ollie Watkins, um, after brilliant, brilliant work from John McGinn and Leon Bailey with that pass through the legs. It was just um, exactly what we needed to keep this run going. Yeah, to be honest, I don't think anyone would have missed that. Um, <laughs> you know, so yeah, no. Uh, that's Durant. my my kind of range. That you know, <laughs> two yards out, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, as, as good as it was from Ollie, like, got to give credit to Bailey. Put the ball on the absolute plate, and just his decision making in critical times. Um, you know, player came out and he just nutmegged him. Um, great start to the game. Um, you know, Ollie continues his scoring form. Ollie, that I've always backed from day one and never doubted. Please delete never. all previous episodes I may have. Run the tape, um, run the tape. <laughs> then it gets to the point where, like, you know who's doing so well. You keep seeing in terms of goals, assists. Um, you know, Haaland's five dog shit goals in the cup don't count. But, <laughs> you know, like goals and assists that in, in comps that matter, um, it kind of is concerning that he's so far ahead of the pack. And um, I think there's going to be a lot of interest in him come summer, to be honest. Yeah, there will be. And I think uh, he won't be the other one. The other one that potentially could be uh, a big talking point all summer is uh, Douglas Louise. And he bagged a couple of goals, Noah. Uh, the first one after some great work from JJ. Um, McGinn as well was involved in that one. Um, I thought McGinn, just on a side note, was one of his best games for Villa. I just thought he's really taken that Kamara role and try tried to like step up into something maybe he's not used to, but he he, he was fantastic on Saturday and um yeah JJ with a lovely little ball to Douglas Louise who couldn't really miss. Yeah, um, I think that was the goal that the Villa social team put the compilation together and yes. every single player playing for Aston Villa touched the ball before that goal. Uh -huh. That just mm. proves how. I think it was thirteen passes. I think. Unbelievable, like, honestly, unbelievable. That's, that's probably a goal of the season for me in terms of team build up. We always talk about how good we are building up from the back, but that is the pinnacle of it, of Unai Emery football. And it must have been a great call from Douglas Suez and JJ heard him and a smooth little turn pass and he couldn't miss. Uh, he's in unbelievable form, nine goals in the league now, his best scoring season mm. um, of his career. And uh, yeah, he's unbelievable. I hope he can. Again, I think he's got two years. I think he re-signed during last year on a three-year deal. So I think he has a year and a bit to run and hopefully he can uh, make that another five-year contract. Yep. Um, we definitely need him. Uh, and he brings so much going forward and, you know, defending as well. I think his all-round game has just been taken to an absolute different level this year. Loving what he's bringing. Um, and another guy that I'm loving what he's bringing is Paul Torres, um, who's – Really just at the, the heart of everything, Tommy, coming out from the back, starting the attacks, you know, very solid in his defending as well. And Longley looks a better player playing next to him. And, um, yes, we conceded those two goals, which we'll get to, but having him back into the team is uh, such a huge difference, especially in the way we start our attacks. Yeah, what was that stat I've seen in the premise, like most yards covered going forward? And I think he's in, like, the top three in the – Funny enough, the other two, I think, are midfielders or forwards. So it speaks volumes, especially as a centre-back. Um, thought it was funny actually having two left-footed centre-backs, but, hey, mm. like it worked. And and I think Longley stepped up to the plate. He's come under some criticism, but yes. I think for a reasonable price, he wouldn't be – I mean, with we, Ming's returning, you know, it wouldn't be bad. But anyway, back to Torres. So, yeah, like, guys, absolute class, you know, can pick a better pass probably than half of our midfield, I think. And um, I think his defense has improved a lot. He's always been quite slow, but I think he knows how to use his slow pace to his advantage. Maybe just you know allowing opposition forwards um, some extra room. Um, mm. But yeah, looked insane. Bit sh a shame that he went off, and 
Um, you know, it's probably a good segue as well. Like Callum Chambers, I think there was a post or or something something said post post game, and he goes like, "I'm always ready to go." And you know, even if it's small contributions, it's picking up three points like that, knowing I came in, did a job. And Chambers has always been a capable centre back. I think we've just you know cool, we've just progressed further up, and um, you know, unfortunately, he's dropped down the pecking order. But I'm so glad we have someone like that to just step in and and fill the gap when needed. Yeah, Emery spoke well about Chambers, um, about his attitude, about the fact that he said to him in January, I think that, you know, you can go if you want to go, but he decided to stick around. And, um, you know, he said, he, like you said, he's always ready to play. And, yeah, um, I thought he did pretty well in the second half. I mean, obviously he is like fifth or sixth choice centre back, you know, so he's not going to bring the same sort of consistency as a Konza or a Mings or a, or a Carlos, but um, look, you know, um, you know, he did a good job and, you know, we went into that uh, into, you know, halftime in a pretty good spot. I know we conceded just before halftime and that was a bit of a silly goal to concede a bit of free header at the back post. But before that, Noah uh, Douglas Louise got his second goal ahead of this time. That you don't see very often and lovely, um, Cross from McGinn on his right foot that you don't see very often. Yeah, two things we don't see very often linking up there. Um, normally, uh, Louise is the one taking the corners from either side. Mm. Um, and then he's getting on the end of, I guess, a second the part corner, I guess. And he yeah. rebounds out and we cross it in. And he's all around games. Just, I can't quite believe how much he's come on over the last two years. We've always kind of seen the ability there. You look back to that lockdown season i guess the project restart where he just took the team by storm in the middle of the park but never could add goals mm. he could never add goals i guess he's playing a bit deeper but now he's got that all-round ability to ping a pass create and score um he's one of the best all-round midfielders in the premier league and he's gonna keep adding to it he could he could get you know 10 15 goals in the premier league and we haven't had a midfield do that since the 1990s i think david yeah. platt was it was he our last yeah one? um maybe um I yeah, think he was the last one in the Premier he League. Was, um, he was a bit of an interesting one. He was kind of more of a number 10, I'd say, yeah. there than a round out midfielder. He was given a lot of license back then. But um, but yeah, I think and Douglas Louise, like in the periods of of Stephen Gerrard's reign, um, Dean Smith's reign, where we've been struggling, it's been very much him struggling. But I find now that in those games that maybe we're not playing as well, he's still consistent and he's showing a level of consistency this season that maybe wasn't there before. Oh, absolutely. And and that's the sort of part he had to improve in his game, especially now Kamara's out. I guess he kind of had to step up that little bit more yeah. mm. um, and he's going to have to keep doing that. I mean, no disrespect to Forrest and, and obviously the, uh, Fulham who we played the week before, mm. but he has to do this in the bigger games. Like when you play Tottenham, which is an absolute massive game in a fortnight's time, Yep. Um, I don't think we get bigger games than that in this season going on, but yeah, he's got to have to keep stepping it up. And I think he will. I think he's a competitive beast. And, you know, for example, City sold him. Manchester City yeah. sold him. And he wants to probably show those guys, what one, they didn't buy him back, which I'm so thankful for, by the way. And two, that they sold him in the first place. And, you know, he's, I'd have to say at the moment, in our top two most important players, like by far. That's the, oh. yeah, that that's definitely true. I think he's definitely one of the most important guys. And um, look, um, got to give uh, Forrest a bit of credit because I think in that end of the first half and especially the start of the second half, they put us under some pressure and um, they obviously uh, scored score the goal uh, from the corner. And then there's the ones just after half time. And then um, Alanga has a great chance to make it three all, and that would have been really sort of dicey there, Tommy. And, um, you know, it was another example of maybe, you know, coming out after a break, not quite as sharp as we were, you know, and that's been something that's that's happened a few times, you know, conceding goals around the breaks. Um, you know, um, do you think that's probably just because of the, the, the injuries in defense or do you see anything else there? Well, I mean, in football in general, Scott, right, you never dominate 100% of possession and yep. there's always going to be at least one or two chances from other sides. You know, go back a couple of years, it could have been Forrest have two chances on goal and they win 2-0. Mm. So um, about taking chances, Forrest are actually a half-decent side. I think they've invested in the team, uh, a Winnie, a, a whatever his name is, and, yep. you know, Alanga. These are good players. They're actually able, able to source and... Um, you know, I think I think the, they their chances were justified. They, they, they caught us sleep. And it's not the first time that Villa have done it. Um, 
But, you know, to concede two in quick succession, you know, kind of just a lapse just before going into the break and then coming out a bit laxy days instead of being switched on, you know, ride the wave out. We knew they were going to come out firing. And 3-2 is a very interesting scoreline. And then, you know, we I'm surprised Ollie did not get the assist for the fourth goal. An absolute piss take, to be honest. But, you know, Bailey, like that that's what you expect when you sign someone to a contract extension, someone who's grateful, someone who's now going to earn more money, and someone who actually wants to repay the faith shown in him that Villa have. You know, we stood by him with injury, and I don't even think he's hit his ceiling yet. You know, he was a freak at Leverkusen, always plagued by injury, but touch wood, I really hope um, we continue to see this from Bailey. I was reminded um, that from one of our viewers that um, I – uh, I predicted Bailey to be the biggest disappointment of the season <laughs> at the start of the season. Yeah. So I got that one wrong. Um, now he's absolutely on fire. But do you really who, who think... put that comment in? Uh, I was actually a uh, comment from uh, Silly Business uh, face to face. Bonnie, yeah, yeah, Bonnie yeah. Cooper. So, um, that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So she was uh, getting getting stuck into me earlier on. Um, but uh, look. Yeah. Um, do you really think that Ollie Ollie meant to pass that one? Do you think that was a, or do you think it was a shot? Because the keeper gets a hand. I, on. I'll go first. I think he meant to pass it because if you look at the replay, the way he shapes his body, I think he knows he's not going to be able to dink it over the keeper and aims it back across goal. I mean, Ollie he Watkins does have has, a little look. He has a little look, and he has ten assists this season for a reason. You know, he's tied the most assists in the league. Mm. He's kind of yeah. not not a pass first striker, but a pass orientated striker. If he knows I, he's not going to score, he passes. I think he has a lot of respect for Bailey because he knows Bailey puts balls on a plate for him, and Bailey's actually looking for Ollie. So Bailey's here to make him better. And hey, like you get an assist as well. You know that adds to his overall tally. It's total goal contributions. You know we know he's scoring for fun right now. Um, someone that probably doesn't get enough talk about, and I think you know, it's a, it's a weird start for him. But Tillemans, I think it's a great position he's playing in. You know, just find Ollie and plug the gap. And I think I saw um, it was Moreno taking a throw in near the halfway line. He's just sprinting to get into position and you know, kind of organising everyone. And I think that's leadership that we need in this team. Tillemans well, is very. Un- it was very unlucky when he hit the post. What that a goal that would have been! That was a lovely move as well, and that would. I think that was th- three two at that point. He made a four yeah. two. Yeah. yeah so like, he, um, he, he's got techers. He's got techers. I'd love to be on the training pitch and just have him in my side. I actually think he's got more techers than Louise Kamara McGinn. He's probably our most technical midfielder. Um, and can absolutely of- ping a shot. And I think, absolutely. Ping a shot. I think he'll be better next year as well. I honestly think absolutely. it could be another situation like a Bailey where he needed just a year. I mean, because he does, if I had one criticism, I think he does sort of float in and out of games, you know, yes. um, you know, that, and sometimes, you know, I'm looking and it's been 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, where's Till? Oh, I didn't, didn't even realize he was playing, you know, um, for a second there. But then he'll do something magic like the three ball for uh, Ollie against Fulham or, you know, hitting the post on, on the weekend, you know. So he's certainly got that in his locker and um, those goals and assists could be crucial in the run-in for sure. And let's talk a bit about yeah. a run-in because, the you know, the game was wrapped up fairly com- comfortable in the end, but we got Luton this weekend. And I, um, I want to talk a bit about this game because, first of all, I don't think it's a... I don't think it's straightforward. I think it's going to be a tough game. I but agree. they've had a bad week, Luton, right? And I think this is kind of important in how the game might um, pan out because they have lost They lost 6-2 to City last night in the Cup. Harlan bagged yeah. five, five goals. So that's going to be a bit of a body blow. But the other thing is Everton getting their points back, some of their points. And I think that they're well, going to they? be... Yeah, so um, they've they only got, been deducted... six. Yeah, six points now. So they got four points back. I think that's right. Yeah, so um, now they're five points inside the relegation for, zone. For yeah. context, yeah, Luton are 18th, right? So they're in relegation. They're on 20 points. Forest are on 17th, but Luton have a game in hand. So they can bring it to a point difference if they win. Yeah, Brent, we know they're not. Brent, Brentford, they're Forest. Not. There's a few teams that could be dragged they're really in. Coming I, down, said, yeah. I said Brentford would go down, and no one believed me this year in my relegation projection no oh. one believed me and no one believed you when he said ollie would get sold <laughs> I, I said he'd get sold but i didn't say for which reason he may get sold for 100 million and i'm not saying i called it so him and gerard were both gone i just didn't give the timeline <laughs> and I Brent said, yeah, yeah. so brett so listen to this right so 15 16 17 
they're all on tw- uh, 15, 16, Everton, Brentford. So Everton, 15, Brentford, 25 points. Yeah. And mind you, everyone's played 26 games except Luton. Yes. So Everton, Brentford, 25, 15, 16, Nottingham, 24, Luton, 20. Right. So that can get really interesting in the coming it weeks. Can. But hopefully, can. hopefully they all lose this week. So then it's a problem for two weeks' time. And, hey, uh, and Kenilworth there. Road isn't an easy place to go. It's a tight nip ground. You're really close and personal with supporters. I had the chance to go there a couple of years ago. I went and saw Luton play Huddersfield out of all places. I was just in London and wanted to go to a game. And Jordan Rhodes. It, 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 he was actually playing Jordan Rhodes. Um, yeah. But it was one of those grounds. It's such a unique atmosphere. And it's one, Luton's a town. It's a hard nut town that I gathered from anyway. I was very scared getting out of that place. Um, but the, the, the this club means so much to the supporters. Mm, and the absolutely. fact that the Premier League is driving on even more. And they're going to, you know, we're a top four club at the moment. They're going to want our heads, like as a club. They, they, want, a, they want a big scalp. And they, they play on the yeah, front yeah. foot as well. They they're, do. They're, they're not a defensive team. I mean, if you look at the game last night against City, um, they were leaving... Harlem one and one at the back. You know they 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 press. They're ballsy. They're they ballsy. press. They've got a a very yeah. a sort of money ball approach to their team. In the they've got very physical players, very strong players, players that can press and and put you under pressure at the back. And then they've picked up you know Andrews Townsend and Ross Barkley. These kind of guys that are almost discarded at other clubs, you know, but I've got, I've got to give respect Barkley, to Ross. Barkley, Ross Barkley is yeah, unreal. He's balling at the moment. I, I and saw I hope, him. I hope he finds one with them. I hope it's not just a stepping stone still thinking he's king shit. I'd really hope he song, signs a bit of a long-term deal there. Oh, I think if he stay up, he will, but yeah. it's yeah. it's such a but risk for them because he's on a, he'll be on their most money by far. Well, people are talking about him putting him in the England squad. I mean, it's uh, that's how well he's playing. I'm, I saw him a couple of weeks against uh, Man United, and he was the best player on the pitch. Absolutely, absolutely destroyed them. Absolutely, and that was another thing. Gonna, that's another thing I want to talk about is the United result against Fulham helped us massively. Thank after, you. After our, um, you know, after we got the points in the bag, I had two screens going, and I had the United game on in, in the background with uh, no sound. And when Fulham scored that winner, it was just a perfect, perfect uh, afternoon. And um, wow, that really sets us up into, um, well, I saw a stat saying that we are 91% chance of finishing in the top five. I'm now. saying that too. So, and apparently to finish in the top four, we need to win nine of our remaining fixtures to secure. That gets us to 71 points. So that's nine out of 12? Top- no, that's all. Sorry, Which yeah. Is crazy. That's a crazy amount of points you need just to make the four. Yeah, so that'll get us to seventy points, which of the last what I don't know how many years has been Champions League. Yeah. Um, but we've got some big games in that. We've got Tottenham, Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal, City. So we'll do half of them, mate. I'm telling you, Liverpool are uh, injury plagued right now. We play them in the second last week. But then, then again, <laughs> so are we. Right, we're playing fifth and sixth choice centre backs. Well, what do you call Pau Torres? Well, well, is he, is he in? Well, is the, he in? the news well, is actually that I, I read yesterday, I think it was, that he's actually come, his scan went well and yeah. he's likely to start against Fulham, uh, Luton. So um, that that's good news. Yeah. So hopefully he, he's all right. And Const is on the way back as well. I think he'll be back this week too. Mm. So there's heaps of positives coming our way oh, on that I sort of regard. All right. So let's do a prediction for Luton. And there's one more thing I want to talk about it before we go, of course, a very big news. But, Tommy, looting away, Saturday night, the late game, yeah, live on Sky. I'm going to be conservative and go five fucking nil. We're going to destroy them. Yes. We're going to rip some shit up mm-hmm. down there, are we? Yeah. We're going to take that little tin pot ground and we're going to give it to them, you know? I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty sure Ollie's. House, Ollie's house is bigger than the stadium. I know you got to walk through someone's backyard to get into the ground. And I'll tell you what, Fucking I'm so hell. excited to see Villa on tour's video of them doing just that because it's in a way that I'd love to walk through myself. Oh, I think mate, it's, it's unique. We'll it's be, unique, and it's it's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, my score prediction: I'm not going to guess five nil. <laughs> I'm going to go two nil. I'm gonna I'm gonna go four two to Villa. I think that's going to be. A lot of goals and the same as last week, same score as last week, 4 2. Um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll, you know, I think it'll be close. It might be like, you know, 3 2, sort of 
and we'll get one at, at the end or something, you know. About- it's a Ross Barkley <laughs> event series, this. I know, I think I think they're just down down and under right now. I know they've got a point to prove, but we're just putting nails in the coffin lately. And we know how to win. I think that's really important. And our waveforms actually improved a lot. Mm. Well, we'll wait and see, but we're all, we're all predicting wins. Let us know in the comments how you think we'll get on a kid North with road. And uh, but the big news that I wanted to get to just before we finish up was the uh, the draw for the Europa Conference League round of sixteen, yeah. and it's going to be Ajax Amsterdam from Holland, uh, two European ex European champions uh, going head to head. I think, from my point of view, I think it's possibly the worst draw that we could possibly have um, yeah. from a sort of. From the point of we got the Spurs game in the middle of those two games, I'd you know I would have preferred you know anyone else really because uh, it's going to be tough, but it, it is a big occasion and I it's going to be exciting. I can't wait. I can't wait. I mean, I know like Max and Owen, for example, they've been to the Netherlands already this season. I think they've already been to Amsterdam um, yeah. already this season, so they don't have to go somewhere different just yet. But what an opportunity to play. <laughs> One of the big boys in Europe, someone that's been playing in the Champions League. I think they got to the Champions League semi final not too long ago when yeah, they had all those boys ago, playing yeah. there. So they're a big club. They're a massive, massive club. And it's going to be an absolute honor to to host them again at Villa Park. Uh, the last time we did that, I think, was 2008. Yeah. I Martin think. Larson with Martin the Larson. Goal yeah. And... Yeah. So I'm, I, I, I'm honestly can't wait. I think it's going to be a great atmosphere, both away and at home. Yeah, 55,000 at uh, Johan Cruyff Stadium, and um, it's going to be a great atmosphere not there as well. They're, they're not having a great season. They're not. Just a look at the moment. They're sitting at fifth on, on 36 points. PSV have just blown ahead at first at 65. And, so and, and do you know what, Tommy? Just... Around Christmas, they Battle were in bottom. the releg- relegation zone. If they sack yeah. their coach and they've they've turned it around a bit and they've and they've started winning games. They got this. They got this midfielder Jordan Henderson. You might not have heard of him. He's signed for him as well. It's true. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm not too worried, but it is probably the toughest game we could have. And you know, with injuries and with uh, the fact we got that Spurs game, I probably would have preferred that game later on in the tournament. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And if we do win, then, look, everyone, we are the favourites but with the bookies to win the competition. And if we can go out there and take care of Ajax, we will be firm favourites. And um, Yes, look, sir. And with the, um, the, the, um, the results that have been played out, it's looking good for, you know, fifth place for England for Champions League as well. So that's really exciting. And when you know, do you know that will, when that will be confirmed, Scott, if it is Champions League? I think it's it'll be after the end of the season. Yeah. Okay. It depends how far the English teams go. Um yeah. so you know we could really quite there could be some sort of situation where we play the Europa Conference League final and we have to win for fifth place to be, you know, a Champions, Champions League, spot. League spot, and yeah. so we'll we'll be playing for a Champions League spot in, in in essence. So that could be kind of weird, but you know, look, um, I think it was a great opportunity for us. You know, like there's talk about our finances and that sort of thing. So Champions League football is really important, and um, this weekend really helped us. The win against Forest, United losing, so it's been a huge week, and um, yeah, I'm really excited to for the next game against um, Luton. So let us know what you think about the draw. Let us know um, what you think about the game against Forest and the games coming up. And, um, you know, what do we need to, you know, focus on the Premier League, uh, rest players for the Europa Conference League, or, you know, how would you do it? I mean, um, you know, let us know in the comments. And, uh, yeah, that's about it for this week. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Woo. Noah. Always a pleasure. Up the villa. And we will see you after Luton with Max Stokes from uh, Villa on Tour coming on next week. So don't miss that one. Max is on, on and he's looking forward to it. And we're looking forward to having him on. So up the villa. See you next week. Woo.